Good afternoon. It is five o'clock and it is time for talking about Congo. And I just got back to Indianapolis from a church service for uh, ordination of one of our, uh, our pastors. And so I'm back in Indianapolis and I haven't had time to get home uh, to actually make a stop anywhere. But I wanted to go ahead and say hello to everybody. And also talk about, uh, William Shepard. And as I mentioned, uh, earlier, uh, as I wrote in the, in the thing, what does William Shepard has to do with Congo? And today is also, ooh, sun's in my eye. Nope, that won't work. Uh, uh, what does, uh, William Shepard have to do with the Congo? And today is All Saints Day. And that's a day when we recognize all the, uh, church believers and that who have passed on, uh, that has died in the previous year. Like, uh, at our church service this morning, we read off the names of the people in our membership who have died over the, uh, since the last All Saints Day and which is always the first of November. So, uh, I think it was appropriate that we talk about William Shepard. William Shepard was one of the first uh, missionaries to the Congo. He was an African American, and it was uh, astonishing to me when I found out about it. I found out about it after I went to the Congo, and and I came back and I started saying, "Oh, I should learn more about what's going on and what the Presbyterians are doing." in the Congo since there were over 2 million Presbyterians in the Congo and how did they get there and how they started and so forth. So I read about William Shepard, William Henry Shepard. And he was a, like I say, the first missionary. He uh, had went to undergraduate school in Hampton, Virginia. He was a, a pastor. But he got his, started, uh, his theology school at, uh, down in Alabama. And it's currently called Stillman College now, but it wasn't called Stillman College when he went there. And he, uh, went there and after he got out, he, uh, finished, he stayed in Alabama and he got uh, really reading about W. E. Du Bois and a number of other people, and he decided that he was going to uh, start a mission in the Congo. And uh, at the time, the Presbyterian Church was uh, was not uh, uh, too keen on the idea, uh, and especially for sending over an African American. This was like in 1870s, uh, 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 and so this was just right after the slaves were freed, and he decided that, oh, you know, I want to go there, and he spent a number of years uh, trying to get the Presbyterians to let him go to the Congo. So finally, the Presbyterians... Uh, they said, well, uh, we will send you if you can find a white person to go along with you. We just can't send a black person over there, uh, African American over there. We have to send a white person. So he spent the next few years and he came and found, finally talked a William Shep, I mean, uh, a Lapsley into going to the Congo. Uh, Lafayette was a younger uh, a person, and he decided that, uh, you know, they convinced him, said, okay, once you go and you can, you know, you know, be in charge of this mission in the Congo. So Lapsley and, and Shepard, they got together and they started raising money because you had to raise money in order to go to the Congo. The church, uh, you know, said, Hey, if you're going to do a mission, you got to raise money. These were all obstacles, I believe, that to, 
discouraged Shepard, but Shepard was really keen on the idea of going to the Congo. So they raised money. They took a ship to finally after after a couple of years of raising money, they got a ship to England. And while he was in England, he read some up on the Congo and it, he uh, read one of the stories that a Morrison had wrote about that he had suspicions of what was going on in the Congo by this King Leopold of Belgium. So when so they finally made it to the Congo, sailed on down to the Congo, and this was probably in about in the 1888 uh, at the time. And so when he got to the Congo, he uh, went in to see King Leopold, and King Leopold, uh, as was the practice at that time, King Leopold uh, gave the Presbyterians a area to evangelize uh, and to and to, to you know you know Christianize the the natives there. So they went there, and on their way to the uh, Luwebo area in central Congo, uh, uh, Reverend Lapsley, he died. And he caught malaria and he died. So that just left uh, Shepherd there. And I'm not sure, you know, you know how much Shepherd at that point in time decided that uh, he needed to notify the people. But, you know, the only way to notify people is to write a letter and send it back to the, the mission committee saying, okay, uh, Lapsley has died. Samuel Lapson, uh, has died, but I'm going to go ahead and continue. Uh, but anyway, he went ahead and he really worked the Congo mission. So he was at that point in time, he be, by default, he became head of the Congo mission in the, uh, in Congo. Uh, so he stayed there, uh, many of years and then he finally came back to the United States. But before he came back to the United States, he observed what was going on as being tipped off by Morrison as to what was going on that King Leopold was really number one, being harsh to the natives, uh, were, uh, forcing them to, at hard labor to do uh get collect rubber and uh if they didn't collect rubber that he, he would cut their hands off so he saw all of this stuff first hand by being there he learned to speak the language he uh survived and he became known as the african american livingston uh as you kind of remember uh livingston uh, had, had come to the, uh, in search of, uh, the Congo before, but, he, but, uh, this kind of, he got that nickname of the African American Livingston. So anyway, uh, what he documented all these cases of the, uh, natives being, being mutilated and all the hard work being killed and, you know, for not, you know, getting enough rubber. And he documented this. And so he, when he finally decided to go back to the United States, kind of like, um, you know, after being there a while, he took all this information back to, uh, Morrison and they compared notes and everything. And this is the beginning of the fall of King Leopold. Uh, finally, uh, the uh, King Leopold was dethroned by the Belgian government and the Belgian government took over the Congo, although it didn't drastically improve, uh, the condition, but it, you know, started the, uh, got rid of, uh, King Leopold and therefore, uh, conditions really improved a little bit. But that was the start of bringing light on what was going on in the Congo. And uh, that that was Belgium's only colony. So it was only affected the Congo. 
uh, but you know, you had the the English there, you had the French there, and you had all a, a number of other European countries that was in the, in Africa at the time. But it brought light upon how these Western countries were treating the slaves because, you know, they just was telling them that, oh, yeah, we're civilizing them. they really glad that we're here. Uh, they're learning. They're being educated and all these type things, which was basically a falsehood. So uh, the Presbyterians to the day and a lot of people in the Congo, uh, because as a result of what King Leopold was doing, brought light to the whole country since King Leopold was a, uh, was in charge of the whole country. So they are really looking at King, uh, I'm sorry, looking at uh, uh, Henry Shepherd as the, William Henry Shepherd as the one who kind of liberated them from some of the devastating stuff that King Leopold was doing. So that's the story on King Leopold. Sorry, it's kind of a little disjointed, but as I said, I just got back into uh, Indianapolis, and I'm kind of uh, still a little fighting this wind, and it's really cold outside. That's why I'm sitting inside the car, uh, and I couldn't do it outside because the wind is really blowing, and I stopped over at Sam's to, to pick up a couple of things. And, uh, but anyway, I just wanted you to know about, uh, William Shepard, Reverend William Shepard, uh, who was, did a really big, uh, highlight and helped dethrone, uh, Leopold in the Congo. And we can all, uh, be grateful to that because the Congo would, uh, would maybe not be in, in such bad shape. I would probably be in worse shape. But uh, that was the story on King Leopold and also uh, William Shepherd uh, for this All Saints Day. And so thank you so much for coming in and watching. And if you're looking at this on the replay, you can always leave a comments and and uh, your your questions, and also I will post uh, one of the books that I read, which is uh, William H. Shepard, The African American Livingston, is by Bill Phelps, and it's one of the great books, and it talks about what all happened in the sequence of what what happened, and uh, they really went through and researched uh, what uh, 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 Reverend Shepherd had did back in a lot of the information is stored at uh, Hampton University, his alma mater. Uh, so thank you again, and we will talk with you tomorrow at 3 o'clock. I think we'll be back on the reg regular schedule at that time, but thank you, and I hope uh, on this All Saints Day, you can remember people in your own church that have gone before you and also um, a little bit of history on the Congo about one of the early uh, missionaries, the first missionary to the Congo. Thank you again, and we will talk with you later.